Are rising energy costs a major concern for you? Trying to find out ways to maximize the efficiency of your home appliances? Hi, it's Steve from Part Select. In this video, we'd like to share with you some energy saving tips for your refrigerator. Now to help you with energy costs with your refrigerator, one of the first things that we'll talk about is how our refrigerator works. Basically, how the refrigeration process works is that we remove heat from food items and then dissipate that heat into the atmosphere. Keeping that in mind, every time we open the refrigerator door, we introduce more heat into that refrigerator and therefore it has to work harder to get rid of it. So one of the first tips that we're going to share with you today is to properly organize your refrigerator so that you don't stand with the door open while you're searching for an item. Using labeled or see-through containers for items is a surefire way to minimize the amount of time that you spend looking in your refrigerator. During the organizing process, you should also keep in mind items that you use on a regular basis should be kept to the front of the shelves. Those things that you rarely use, putting them at the back is the best place for those. Also keep in mind that not all food items need to be refrigerated. Items like soy sauce, some fruits and vegetables can be kept in a container on your countertop. Be sure to check the labels on your food to determine whether or not the items need to be refrigerated. Now related to the topic of organizing your refrigerator, you also want to keep in mind how much you can put in your model of refrigerator. For a refrigerator to work efficiently, it needs to have room for air to flow between the shelves. Air will enter the fresh food compartment on any refrigerator, circulate around, and exit back into the evaporator area, which is typically located at the back of the freezer. When you impede the airflow, that causes the refrigerator to work that much harder to maintain a proper temperature. Keeping that in mind, it's important that we don't block the air inlet ducts into the fresh food compartment or the return air vents that go back to the freezer. If you find that you need to fill your refrigerator completely, you should probably look at getting a larger size. Now along with organizing your refrigerator to minimize door openings, on days that you purchase food items that need to be refrigerated, we suggest that you cool them during the transportation process. Simply putting them in a cooler with a few blocks of ice or adding your frozen foods into a cooler along with your refrigerated foods allows them to stay cool before they get introduced into your refrigerator. Anytime we add room temperature food items to your refrigerator, it has to work that much harder to bring that temperature back down to normal. For leftover food items, or if you're into pre-cooking meals, allow those to come down to room temperature before introducing them into the refrigerator. Another energy saving tip that we'd like to share with you is to utilize the features that are present in your refrigerator. Some models will have an energy saver switch that basically turns on or off an electric heater. If you're in an area where there is low humidity or during certain parts of the year there is low humidity, you simply need to turn that switch off. If your refrigerator model has a through the door ice and water dispenser, you should also utilize that feature. That prevents opening the door and allowing room air temperature into your freezer or your fresh food compartment. Another energy saving tip along those lines is that if you're going to take some frozen food to thaw out, simply put it in the fresh food compartment and allow it to thaw out there. Now there are also a few maintenance items that you should pay attention to to help you save money. First of all, inspect the door gaskets on both the fresh food compartment and the freezer to ensure that they're making a nice tight seal. Anytime air is able to leak into that refrigerator, your compressor will run longer to maintain that temperature. So make sure that the gaskets are pliable and in good condition. If there are any tears or deformations to them, they should be replaced. Now the last thing that we'll discuss is setting the controls for the proper temperature for both the fresh food and your freezer. For a fresh food, the optimum temperature is somewhere around 2 or 3 degrees Celsius or 37, 38 degrees Fahrenheit typically. For a freezer, we'll look at minus 18 degrees Celsius or 0 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure your controls are set to maintain those temperatures. Now to check those temperatures, 
we suggest that you use a good quality probe type thermometer. Set a glass of water in your fresh food compartment, allow it to sit there for 12 to 24 hours and test the temperature. If you need to make an adjustment, allow another 24 hours before recording the temperature again. In the freezer, we find the best item is ice cream. Simply insert the probe into that and check the temperature. Thank you so much for watching this video. We certainly hope that some of these tips will help you save money on your power bill. For more videos on appliance repair, maintenance and cleaning tips, be sure to visit our website. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thank you.